I can't believe we're at the final episode of season one of the Dr. Wendy Show. When we started this journey, my question, not just to myself, but to all of us was, what if you fly? Well, guys, here we are, almost 11 episodes later, and we have flown. If I haven't flown by myself, I have flown due to you. Thank you for watching. Thank you for commenting. Thank you for sharing. This has been such a process that has really pushed me to go outside my comfort zone. And for that, I am forever grateful to each and every one of you for being on this journey. So season two is coming up, but I want to thank you so much for season one. And without further ado, I would like to share with you guys the pilot of the Dr. Wendy Show that started all of this. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. I'm forever grateful to each and every single one of you for being on this journey, and I love you so, so much. And whenever you're in doubt and thinking of stepping outside the box, when you have fear, I hope you remember me and ask yourself, what if I fly? Thank you. Let's continue to fly together. From my heart to yours, See you next season on The Dr. Wendy Show. We did it! I'm going to say something that may not be popular. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I think... I I think black girl magic is exhausting. I think it's exhausting to exist and to thrive in a world, in a space that doesn't want to see you succeed. Who's gonna lead us in prayer? Who? Jasmine. April. April. <laughs> All right, dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this moment. We thank you for this fellowship. We thank you for this gathering to promote this sister who's looking to go higher. Lord, thank you for this food. Thank you for the sustenance. Thank you for the fellowship. Thank you for the oneness. These are not the blessings I ask in the name of your sweet son, Jesus. Amen. 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 Can we do a toast? I would like to welcome you guys to the Dr. Wendy Show, mm -hmm. where we will have honest, open conversations amongst friends, and we will hold each other accountable. But most importantly, we'll be transparent. I feel pressure. <laughs> All right, let's go to the table. So I'd like to welcome you ladies to The Dr. Wendy Show. And the beauty of this show is that each episode will be based upon a theme. So today's theme is Black Girl Magic. And if it is any question why the theme is Black Girl Magic, I dare you to look to your left and to your right, because you <laughs> women exemplify what it is not only to be a Black woman, but to be magical. April B. Ryan, the National Association of Black Journalists, Journalists of the Year, you have been on the front lines for a long time. You are the face of politics for black women. Jasmine, <laughs> the Jasmine from the Jasmine brand. You have really transformed the way in which our generation takes in media. And I thought, wow, what a beautiful juxtaposition to have you in April. Thank I you. think some people, when they wake up in the morning, your blog is probably the first thing they check, child. <laughs> they, they still got cold in their eye, and they on the Jasmine brand, like, what did I miss? What did I miss? <laughs> thank so you. thank you for being here I today. I appreciate that. Lindsay, the Granger, <laughs> uh, the host of all hosts. You have been a guest host on The View. You've worked for a Daily Blast. So now you're transitioning to luxury and lifestyle for black people and black women. I just think you are the face of modern motherhood. And just the way you're able to, from my vantage point, balance career and being a new mommy and staying true to you. And that authenticity has allowed you to be in rooms that many of us can only dream of. So I welcome you to the show today. We have Nikedra <laughs> Robinson, the CEO and founder of Black Girls Vote. For so long as black people, and specifically black women, 
our voices have been taken for granted. Yeah. We have been on the front lines and the forefront of elections. We have transformed elections. We've pushed elections to benefit us and our people, but we often don't get the credit for that. You highlight and you empower black women in ways that I cannot even begin to describe. So welcome, ladies. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, right. you. Let's give her a I just want to say yes. it has been a pleasure to watch you yes. as a TV personality, Aww. as a commentator, Aww. as a mom, as an entrepreneur, Dang. as a spicy woman, oh, and, and spicy. Spi <laughs> a spicy woman, and then to come into this new space. Yeah. I'm freaking proud. Yeah. Aww, Evolution. You. Yeah. What does Black Girl Magic mean to you? You know, Black Girl Magic means to me when there's a problem, we're out there fixing it. The first ones, mm. telling people to go out to vote, mm. getting people to understand the dynamic. Because when we go out and when we do something, the first thing we do is serve. That's innate That's in right. us. That's right. And studies have found that when we serve, it's about love for the community. When our male counterparts do it, it's about ego yeah. and mm. money. That's but we do it for love and what's intrinsic with us. Mm -hmm. So there's no pretense, no falsehood. Right. We're the first ones at the schoolhouse mm. when something's wrong. Mm. The first ones at City Hall. Can you say the dissenting voice of Katanji Brown Jackson? I know, that's right. And Go those rollbacks. It. No fear. Right. She showed up authentically. Mm. That's what we do in these spaces when they tell us we can't do it. Yeah. You know, we came from the same communication department and they said the same thing to me. Yeah. She started her own brand, the Jasmine brand. I went out and did what I had to do and came up at the White House. Who knew? Yeah. There were no models, but we said, okay, there's a problem, we have to go fix it. We need to feed the masses to let them know what's out there, what's going on. When I think of Black Girl Magic, I initially I think of like black women doing all these dope things, mm -hmm. but then I also think about like everyday thriving and just yes. just waking up and just like just getting out the bed yeah. and like okay, because that's like not even because, you know yes. I, we, I, you obviously be on social media and we see us black women doing all these amazing things yeah. and conquering and fighting all that kind of stuff. But I feel like the just having a just having coffee and getting out the bed and talking, <laughs> being a mom or being yeah, a, a right. girlfriend or a sister or, friend, you know, yeah. a, a sounding board or just helping somebody or helping your girlfriend or, or having a conversation, just like just like existing, you know what I mean? Without like putting the weight on ourselves, you know. And you do it without any applause yeah. sometimes. <laughs> yeah. That's, 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 that's job that's the thing about black girl magic mm -hmm. and, and people put on to us without my asking us because they will just come up to you and say i need xyz and, and we take it on yeah because you can do it you've proven it yeah. Child, i'm right. tired we're all tired, <laughs> like, we're all tired. We're all tired. And, and i think when i think of black girl magic i think magic like we're magicians right mm -hmm. we figure it out and do it whatever by any means necessary mm -hmm. even when we don't want to show up we have to show up we not only for to. ourselves but for other people right. So and I also think about the people who've come before us. You know, us, you know, our ancestors are magical, right? And mm. they did things, they paved the way for us to be here. So you think about they exuded black girl magic even back then. But us being right here, we all are black girl magic, right? Mm. When you call, we show up. So it's about pouring back into each other as black women and making sure we're pouring into the next generation as well. So when I think I about magic, right. I think about us being moms, sisters, friends, daughters, nice. all of that, and just making sure that we love on each other. So that's magic within itself. I know that's yeah. right. I, I think for me, it changed when I had my baby who's two. Yeah. I think that Motherhood, I think that yeah. I like the boundaries part of it. Like mm. we're magic, but you know, you have to see me in my magic and that means I have to be happy. I have to choose me. I have to show up every day. You take care of myself. Right, yeah. I gotta show you that from when you were little because yeah. you're taking all my energy and kids are growing at such a rapid speed. Mm -hmm. That doesn't happen again. Like once they turn five, it slows down a little bit. Yeah. And so she needs to see a happy household. She yeah. needs to see me choose me. You name some of the things that I decided to do with my career yeah. and steps that I've taken in the last year. It's mm -hmm. more about my kid needs to see a happy household yeah, that's because right. that's everlasting yeah. and opportunities will come and go. And so I think that, that, for me, Black Girl Magic is just stepping in your purpose and being confident, even when you don't know exactly what the road forward looks like, walking on it. I know, that's right. Right, because I'm walking with God. And Oh, come on, God. <laughs> um, no, but I, I'm going to say something that may not be popular. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. I, think, I think Black Girl Magic is exhausting. 
I think it's exhausting to exist and to thrive in a world in a space that doesn't want to see you succeed. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of times we are not necessarily the rule, we're the exception. People who look like us don't dominate in our field. And we have to deal with microaggressions. We have to deal with people labeling you as the angry black woman, not because you did anything wrong, but because you spoke up for yourself. As an academic, I will tell you in my field, I'm exhausted because students will walk into the classroom, they'll see me, and they'll say, where's the professor? And so yes, you know, we get applauded for being these amazing women, but at the core of me, sometimes I'm like, I'm tired. Yeah. I'm tired. But you know, you're raising up another generation in your tiredness because you're showing them who you are and who we show up to be. Mm. My auntie, when my mother died 16 years ago, when my mother was on her deathbed, she said, take care of April. I had one child and another one in my belly. Mm. My aunt, it would not be, a, there would not be an April Ryan if my aunt would not have been exhausted mm -hmm coming to my house, taking care of my children every day. That's black girl mm. magic. It's exhausting, but she did it to see the glory on the other side. She said, God put you here for a purpose and I want to support that. I know, she said, right. you're asking questions. Those kids who see you come in that classroom, where's the professor? Because you look too good for them. <laughs> <laughs> because back in the day, yeah, I've never seen yeah that's what I'm saying. Back in the day, back in the day, our professors didn't look, at them, look like that, but you're giving yeah. them a whole new way to approach this new world that we're in. Motherhood is something else, especially as a career woman. Oh my God. It, it, it changes your yeah. life. It changes the way you look at life. Do you think you guys work harder now that you have kids, or do you look at life differently? I don't, I'm waiting to feel like, feel like myself. I don't feel like myself yet. When is that going to happen? <laughs> it never does. You've lost I'm not going to. No, for, it's, it's you, over. You'll never, never see that person You'll never see that person again. It's like a chapter in your life. You're going to be your new self. Nice. But who you were before that baby, yeah. right? I used to have fun. I would not give it up for anything in the world. Absolutely. They Same make here. you work harder. Mm. Yeah. They make you work harder because you want them to aspire to greatness. That's and right. you are their example. Can we talk about something that recently happened? And that is the whole notion of affirmative action mm. and how that was rolled back in higher education. I mean, what's so interesting is I wrote an article about it and someone came under my article and said, I don't agree with you. Why do you want handouts? Why aren't you the same as your white counterparts? I was like, do you know what affirmative action really is? Yeah. So do you guys have any thoughts on that, being that that's something that's currently impacting our community right now? Um, it's impacting our community in several fronts. There are two uh, Supreme Court decisions that really are rolling back the 1964 Civil Rights Act mm -hmm. and also a backdoor approach to Brown v. Board in the 1950s. Mm. Affirmative action is to fix a wrong. Correct. Okay, that's what it's for. So at the end of the day, we're talking about black and brown students are now not able to be really considered mm -hmm. for predominantly white institutions. Mm -hmm. Not just in education, but in scholarships. Right. Yeah. What it's gonna do is put more of a strain on HBCUs. HBCU. That's right. And, and we stress. have to worry yeah. about the capacity of HBCUs. Of HBCUs. That's right. The lack of funding and, for HBCUs. Yes. Yep. I think people don't, like, discuss the full historical context of HBCUs even. Yeah. So starting before, as soon as slavery ended, people yes. weren't, uh, they didn't have the proper literacy, black people, to get, even when they were PWIs. afforded into these PWIs, they didn't have the proper educational background to make it and be successful there, including all the racism and everything they were met with when they finally got there. Harvard is 43% legacy students. Yep. And so whether you like Tim Scott or not, he brought up a point that let's just get rid of all that legacy action. Yeah, absolutely. Let's get, and, 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 and so then if you want to talk about this clean slate, now that the affirmative yep. action ruling is what it is, mm -hmm. let's talk about everyone in Harvard. Let's look at the two schools, right? North Carolina and Harvard. Yep. And let's see how we can make everyone come in based on their specific merit. Merits, meaning merit. recruiting from all across the country mm -hmm. and world mm -hmm. and coming in on merit and not just yeah. whose staff member works there, how you know somebody Ooh, that works there, how much money yeah, you have, because yeah. wealth doesn't make you. On the building. Yeah. Yeah. Right. No, absolutely. Yeah. In order for me to be successful in my field, do I have to change who I am or scale back on what I consider my personality? So I was just curious if you guys have experienced that or felt that you couldn't be your authentic self to thrive in the space in which you want to be in. Well, I remember when, when uh, George Floyd died. Yeah. Mm. I was talking about, 
I started crying. I started, I mean, we talked about it every single day for like a month. Obviously, it was important to talk about. But I remember being called to the office by the executives to say that I was being too strident. Mm. That's the word to me that says angry black girl. And so I'm the one that goes to the top levels, talk to the diversity head. Let's Because you're not using that language when my counterparts are going crazy over an airline that messes up their flight right. and getting to scream about it for 30 minutes on air about that. It's funny. Right. But when I'm strident about an issue that matters to everybody that I love, and when I have a 30-year-old little brother who's had similar incidents, mm. it hits home in a different way, right? Mm. So I think that it, the, the part bothers me. It hasn't come up with my hair, I guess, because I kind of just started getting into, like, wow, well, just do my hair however. I usually just kept it blown straight, kind of like April. I, you know, I worked in a lot of political spaces, so it was like, that's important to just kind of keep it Very neutral. Very conservative. Right. Look. Yeah. Um, but I think that that bothered me the most. I'm a journalist, but I can't always cut off the fact that I'm a black woman. I can't cut that off and be that objective all. and neutral. I can never cut that off, actually. Mm -hmm. And so that's to me... child. Strident. Yeah. They pulled out a thesaurus on your ass. Yeah, I was like... <laughs> Let me look that up to make sure I'm <laughs> make sure I know. Like I should be um, right. That you is. should be. I mean, that that was mm -hmm. offensive. Mm -hmm. But see, here's the thing: there are double double standards for people who look like us. Mm -hmm. And if we show any kind of extra empathy mm -hmm. or give a little bit of extra texture and context, we're an activist or something. I face that. And I know what activists do, right? So I don't ever want people... I'm not an activist. I'm a journalist. I'm not... People right, to, that's right. right. And people need to know who those people right. exist and, and, okay. in okay. the community and what they're doing. Mm -hmm. Exactly. When I asked questions about Haiti, when I saw the whip hit that Haitian migrant... I remember. I remember that. I am an activist. What if a white person asked the same question? Right. They're not. That's right. There's a double standard here. It's, it's sad, but the truth is, I am cognizant of my delivery mm -hmm. whenever I'm yeah. on TV because I know that passion can easily be construed as anger. When I worked in corporate, I've had... I was the only black person. I've had... I hadn't even said anything, and I gave somebody a look, and they were like, oh, my gosh. And I'm like... They're scared. <laughs> right, they're scared. Get ready to write they're you scared. up. Right, yeah. <laughs> Like, she's gonna do something. I'm like, I, I'm like, I literally didn't, didn't say, say nothing. Like, yeah. literally, I didn't say nothing. Like, I didn't say nothing. But that's fear. That's why I kind of love this whole soft girl, soft, soft girl era. Because, and I know, I know it comes with a lot of like yeah. spending money and doing. But I feel like <laughs> I do we, like spend money. Though. No, but I think I think like black girls being seen as soft is something that I would like mm -hmm. to wholly embrace. Mm -hmm. Whether that's just sitting at home all day, mm -hmm. or whether like even you being quiet with a straight face, that doesn't equal angry. Right. And so for me as a but I was angry though when I went. <laughs> <laughs> For me, we as people, a... we have a gambit of emotion. Yeah. Right, right, right. Sometimes we wear it on our faces. Right. I have to do a better job at that. Like, but you know what? If yeah, we are hard. angry, there are reasons to be angry. And it's OK right. to be angry. It's OK. Right. Right. to be angry. Yeah. Let's get back to the hair yeah. thing. Yeah. I would love to look like you every day at the White House. Right. But if I go there with braids, I'm considered a militant. Because as soon as I wow. came to the White House, 26 years ago, now the longest serving black woman ever in the history of that place. Yes. Yes. Hold on. Thank you. And then what, but no, the... seriously, they said when I first came there, oh, she's a militant because I'm asking questions of an underserved community that's under the umbrella of the White House of the United States. That's right. right. So there is a double standard showing up in the workplace, being authentically you, be it hair or be it how we show up and asking our questions mm -hmm. about a community that still has the highest numbers of negatives in almost every mm -hmm. category. But I'm, I'm an activist because I ask those questions. And you're passionate. Yeah. And that's what it is. I think so, people pick yeah. up on the passion. And then that's the confusion lie. Um, but for me, I can't say that um, I had to do a lot of code switching in a sense because I kind of created my own lane, right. right? You know, as Shirley Chisholm said... And Jasmine, you Yeah, in the same way. Yeah. Like, you know, Shirley Chisholm said, they don't give you a seat at the table, you bring, bring a folding, folding chair, chair yeah. right? Yeah. Oh. And Black Girls Vote That's was right. launched on Shirley Chisholm's birthday. Um, but for me, I worked in government. I started off in politics, working for the mayor of Baltimore, and then I went to the governor's office. But the thing that I found myself... Um, questioning was I too cute in a sense, right? Mm. In a sense, like am I dressed? Cause you know I like to think I'm fly and I'm cute you and I go to work. Yeah, you, you know. But oh, even yeah. but even then, um, just in how am I perceived by being single, black, mm. cute as a young woman who likes to dress up when I go into office? Mm -hmm. So I felt as sometimes. I got looked upon negatively amongst other black women they in that sense. Mm. And they didn't necessarily receive me in that way, like the big it's sister that we talk about, about, the, the, the mentor. Women, because yep. I'm younger, you're older, and then you're looking at me as competition. I'm not in competition with you. I'm looking for you for mentorship, for guidance, for you to take me under your wing. But I didn't necessarily get that. I never had a mentor. Me neither. Really? Yeah. I felt like I, uh, I felt like such a strange person because I never had a mentor, and it wasn't because I didn't want one. It was because it never happened. I felt like a lot of people were gatekeeping. 
Mm. Yeah, yeah. That part. Yeah. And that yeah, hurts, yeah. that hurts when they gatekeep. And yeah. there's enough room for all of us. Right. I'm that person, let's come along, let's come together. When there are sisters out there that you think that are like you in a lot of ways, and then shut that door, and then, but, but, but the problem is they don't want you to come but you still want to come some kind of way because your gift makes room yeah, for you. Absolutely. You know what I'm every saying? Time. Yeah, you want to come friend. in some yeah. kind of way, and I don't yeah. like that. I but it really is fear-based, I feel like. It is. It insecurity. Is. Insecurity. It's, it's insecurity. Fear. My therapist said that. We yes, do fear. things out of, like, five principles, and one of them is fear. Mm -hmm. we got to stop this. We've we got to come together. It. It's scary. Yeah. yeah. So as yeah. black women, there has been conversation about the ways in which we've been depicted in social media and whether social media has helped us or has hurt us. I think it's a, a mix. Yeah. Okay. I think in terms of informing people and educating people on things that normally you would just catch on the news, you can catch that on social media, right? right? Um, but then you also you have the negative side of social media. You have, you know, you have a big audience of people that have opinions. You have more access to people. Um, so it, I think it goes both ways. It just kind of, every situation is different. I don't think we can use a blanket mm -hmm. statement in terms of social media. But it's definitely been very um, helpful in terms of, like, movements. Yeah. That's true. Educating Absolutely. people. That's true. You know, like the stuff that we're talking about now, yeah. affirmative action, a lot of our audience is not, they're not watching the news. They're not going yeah. to CNN. They're not going to Variety or Deadline. And they're not they're, reading, too. They're, yeah, they're, reading they're not. So, and, and so yeah. whatever they, we give them, unfortunately, they unfortunately, it, that's, yeah. they're taking it and they're not yeah. reading. So. so do you feel like you have a responsibility because you know that for some people you are their one-stop shop for news? I think we have a responsibility, um, but we're not the end-all and be-all. In terms of, like, certain topics and educating things that are super important to black and brown people, I feel like we're, it's important for us to shed light on those. And then also, you know, Give you a little tea. gossip, little tea. A little sprinkle, trinkle, trinkle. A little, little razzle dazzle. A little razzle dazzle yeah. dazzle. You know what I'm saying? And then also, like, not for nothing, like, you know, we can give you a bunch of stories, like hard news, and nobody cares. And no then we give you something like else, it, yeah. and everybody's like, ah, in the comments. I'm going to give you guys rapid fire questions. Okay. You have to just answer. You can't think about it. You got to oh, answer. Okay. Boom, boom, boom. Don't wait for the next person. You just give you an answer. Martin or Fresh Prince? Martin. Martin. <laughs> SWV or Escape? That's the Escape. Ooh. They say I look like one of the you women. Do. Like, you do. Like, you do. No, you do. No, 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 not Coco. Uh, the remember. other one, Taj. Oh, Taj. Oh, you do like Taj. Okay. okay. Love Jones or Love and Basketball? Both. Love and Basketball. Both. Love Nick Jones. Love Ain't no both. Okay. I've never saw Love, Love Jones. Jones. What? <laughs> nah, you out. Get out of here. What's I'm not <laughs> Okay. Not yet. How did you go to Morgan State? You didn't right. see. Right. I think love basketball. Okay. Grits. Let's get on a movie night. Grits. Okay. Savory or sweet? sweet. Savory. Sweet. sweet. Oh no. Sweet. Salt and pepper unless, grits. Unless it's, unless it's, uh, <laughs> unless it's shrimp and sweet? grits. Okay. Unless it's Salt grits. and pepper grits. Yeah. Yeah. Shrimp and grits here. Seasoning. Lowry, seasoned salt, or Old Bay? Old Bay. I'm gonna say Lowry. Old Bay. Old Bay. Old Bay is for seafood. No, Old Bay is for chicken. It's for meat. It's for everything. Baltimore stuff. I okay. Baltimore. Yeah. All right. <laughs> it's good. It is good, though. Shoe girl or bad girl? Shoe. shoe. Bad girl. Shoe. shoe. Your shoe? I think so. Oh. Shoes are cheap. Oh, that's right. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 The you, can get, you can get more of your money. Go to the island to get a bag, no taxes. Oh, well, speaking of go to the island, yeah. relax on the beach or tour the town? Beach. beach. Relax beach. on the beach. 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 Okay. Yeah. Books. Fiction or nonfiction? Nonfiction. Non fiction. Fiction. Yeah. Oh, non fiction. Oh, look, non fiction. Non fiction. Last one, last one. Jodeci or Boyz II Men? Jodeci! 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 My mom took me to MC Hammer, too legit to quit tour. It was MC Hammer, Boys to Men, Jodeci, and I think three, three, not three old gentlemen, one of them groups. All right. Yeah. My first concert was Sugar Hill Gang, Rappers wow. I know that's right. That's dope. My first was Immature. Oh, yeah. Okay, okay. Well, I like me some Romeo. What was your first concert? <laughs> I, I, maybe Nelly. Ladies, I want to say thank you so much for coming today. You ladies are the definition of black girl magic. And if nothing else, even though we didn't have mentors, some of us, 
Let us make sure to be mentors to other women. Absolutely. All right? Thank you for coming. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you.